How are you, Bishnia? I'm doing good, Javier. Good to see you again. Thank you for having us here in Miami, for coming actually to Miami. The last time uh, we talked, uh, we went to visit you in Nashville. Absolutely. For the Altima, was it? Yeah, the Altima it was almost uh, three, three, four years ago, I think. Quite a while oh, ago. Like time flies, huh? Yeah. It really does. So, um, the, new, the new vehicle, the new Maxima, mm -hmm. top of the line vehicle for Nissan. And so a lot of work has gone into this because you just told me that when we visited you to see the Altima, you were already working on this. Yeah, yeah. It never stops. <laughs> it's, it's a long uh, development cycle. So we start very early on and uh, we'd already begun work on Maxima that, that far back. So uh, let's talk about it. It's pretty much a new car. All new. We've got a new engine. We've got a new transmission. Uh, platform's been redesigned as well. Uh, and the exterior, of course, probably anybody could tell and I'm sure yourself uh, can appreciate that the exterior is completely different as well both exterior and interior really so I understand the inspiration for the exterior design came from like jet fighters that's right yeah we took a trip down to the Blue Angels Naval Air Station here in Florida actually uh, almost uh, three four years ago when we started development for this car to get inspiration from their aircraft and and try to impart that into a maximum and uh, you can see that in the lines, there's a lot of uh, lines in the exterior, of the, in, in every panel pretty much. Yeah, a lot of complex surfacing. It really, not just from a design standpoint, was it, is it uh, tough to achieve styling that looks that complex but flows together well? But from a manufacturing standpoint, just making panels that look like that is very complex. That's something that a lot of, I mean, the casual uh, consumer like doesn't really I mean, like they see the car and they like it, but they don't understand how, how difficult that process is, right? Right, and I think but that's the trick, right? Is It's difficult for us, we struggle internally, but at the end of the day, as long as the customer likes it, we're good. That's great. So that's the exterior. I mean, oh, another thing, I mean, this is a four, four doors car, but actually because of the design, it looks like a coupe almost. Correct, yeah. Maxima, you know, Javier, is we've historically called it the four door sports car, and that's what we've heard from customers is they look at the car and go, I expect that car to have two doors, but it's practical, it has four doors. Uh, so in that sense, this car is a leader in the segment in many, many aspects. I mean, like, uh, you have uh, you, the, the Chevy Impala, you have the Dodge Charger. Uh, what other cars are competing against directly? Well, Maxima is classified as a large car by, say, J.D. Power. In that class, you've got the Charger and the Impala, as you mentioned, the Toyota Avalon, the Chrysler 300. Um, but beyond that, Maxima also, uh, because it's sportier than typically than those vehicles, and because it's a bit more aggressively styled, uh, it tends to also attract some entry luxury buyers as well. So buyers who are looking at an Acura TLX or looking at a BMW 3 Series. But at a price point that we really, really get a lot more with this car. Exactly, exactly. So we're offering them a very compelling value. Uh, and, uh, you know, with this new one, a, an interior that's at that level, if not more so, uh, than some of the even those entry luxury competitors. So what are we talking about like how many grades how many different models? Uh, are we talking about for this uh, 2016 Maxima? Great question. We've gone from having a couple of grades and a lot of different options to just five grades No options. So there's only oh, five grades to configure a Maxima. You're very likely to find the one you want on the dealer lot That's really s smart I think because uh, it's like getting like a size of, of if you're buying some clothing, yeah. you get a small, medium, large, extra large, and double extra large. <laughs> That's a great and way to put in, it. In this way, you're like saying, okay, this is the, what are the, the names for the? S, S, V, S, L, and S, R. This is a platinum. And the platinum, which is the top of the line. Mm -hmm. And then you, you know what you're getting. So yeah. when you go to the dealership, you already know, and it's not going to be like that little game of, oh, you add this package and this and that. You already know what the car has, how much it costs, and all that. So that's really, really smart from Nissan, I think. Exactly. Uh, so uh, what in, what's the max, when you get this car, the top, the, the most you can, you can expand is like under 40,000, right? Yeah, a fully loaded Maxima is 39,860. So just under 40,000, excluding the destination charge. And then uh, 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 in, the, in the same terms of uh, simplicity, one engine, one transmission for all models. One all engine, that. one transmission for all models, yep. What's that? Can you talk about the specs, please? Yeah, absolutely. The engine is 300 horsepower, uh, so we've increased the horsepower of the engine. Uh, it's uh, six, over 60% of the parts are new. 
one of the key things about the engine is it actually contributes, of course, to fuel economy as well. Yeah. So we know that's important to our buyers. We're now getting 300 horsepower and 30 miles per gallon highway out of the engine. Combined oh, fuel economy, amazing. city and yeah, especially for an engine of that much power, right? 300 horsepower to get 30 miles per gallon out of it used to be what you get out of a four-cylinder car, you know, with half the horsepower 10 years ago. So it really just goes to show how much progress uh, we've made. And then the transmission is our all-new Xtronic CVT. And uh, we've done a lot of different changes that you've been experiencing uh, here in your drive with the programming to make it uh, really fit the character of Max. Absolutely. So the CVT, a lot of people like again, ten whatever they came out for the, with the first version, mm -hmm. completely different because a lot of people didn't really like it at the mm -hmm. beginning. But now you cannot even feel it like it's a CVT. You yeah. really have to know. We've kind of tried to take the best of both worlds. So the CVT works extremely well uh, when it's in its normal CVT mode behavior uh, at low throttle and it's very smooth. You don't feel any shift shock but when you're really getting on it like a journalist like yourself and having a little bit of fun, uh, it starts to perform some shifts. And those shifts give it a very natural acceleration feel. And that's something that our customers have re responded well to. Yeah, it seems that some people were having a, a little bit too much fun here in uh, South Florida. So yeah. We saw a lot of people, a lot of people, oh no, they had a little accident here, oh, uh, that's bad. That's it. Speaking about that, there's a lot of new technology that could probably avoid that, right? Yeah, exactly. That exact collision where somebody rear-ended somebody. If you had a Ford collision warning, uh, which three out of the five grades have standard, uh, it would alert you if the car ahead stops very suddenly, and uh, it'll give you an audible and a visual alert. If you don't, if you fail to, to do anything about it or you're not paying attention, it will even apply some braking for you. And not only in the car in front of you, but it can read two cars ahead of you. That's pretty yeah. amazing. I mean, when I heard that, like, how does that work? <laughs> exactly. That's a that's a very unique part of the way Nissan does it. It's we are able to read not just the car ahead, but the car in front of that by reading underneath the car in front. Excellent. So it's a very unique technology. Great. So Vishnu, uh, another thing that is pretty amazing and uh, something that actually I've been like saying, like they should do it, like do it, include navigation in every model. Yeah, that was a, a decision we made early on. Um, again, it's a flagship car. It makes sense to make navigation standard. And not only is it a touchscreen, but there's also a dial right here where you can use to adjust it as well. It acts like a smartphone, so you can swipe it, you know, like a smartphone does on a map. You can pinch to zoom. So it's very, very, very intuitive. Uh, and it's standard on all the cars. Yeah, and also you have that one, but you also have a screen in here in the cluster. So. Correct. So and there's a pretty neat feature with that, right? Yeah, yeah. So you can set a route from here, and then once you get those directions, you can swipe them over to the meter right in front of the, uh, so if the going driver. Menu. Yeah. So let's pick a previous destination here, and let's say the we're hotel. going to, go to uh, yeah. the hotel, and we hit start. So once it calculates a route, it'll give us some directions. And it says, hey, you know, Starting route guidance take a left to here. your destination. So like you on left road, turn yeah. ahead onto exactly Collins Avenue. Works. Okay. So here we are on this road. And I say, hey, you know, you want to see those directions right Instead in front of you? Instead of looking here, I want to look here. Let me take these directions. And now they're right wow. there, right in front of you. It's like magic. <laughs> yeah. Simple as that. That's amazing. That's pretty cool. Yep. So a lot of the technology, a lot of design, a lot of performance in the car. Um, great job i mean like this car again like it's in the segment where like we were talking about before the malibu and all that but some of those cars are like have the image of being like a fleet car like they're they're a lot in the rental um car rental businesses but this is like sets apart in that sense right correct yeah we're on a retail basis we've sold uh the most against our six hundred competitors uh over the last five years so it's been a very successful car for us with our customers and we want to continue that with this car hopefully it does well and this car is built here in the U.S.? Built right here in the U.S. Uh, they, a lot of the engineering was done here in the in U.S. in Detroit. Uh, our design studio is in San Diego. Uh, our headquarters where the planning functions, including myself, are is in Tennessee. And our plants half a, half away, a uh, half an hour away from us as well in Tennessee. And it's built here, exported to 18 countries. 18 countries from here. Yeah. And uh, it's pretty unique because we were talking before, this car is obviously from Nissan, Japanese company, but this car is not available in Japan. It's too big for Japan. Yeah, it's a little, uh, <laughs> not, not exactly the right fit for them, yeah. But uh, it's a, like you, you heard earlier, it's been a, in here in the United States for 35 years uh, since, you know, 1980, you know, in Mali in 1981. So 
a huge success for us, this car, and it's important for us to keep it around. Eighth generation for this car, and how many you've sold? Like almost three million of them yep, here? Just, here in the U.S. only? Yeah, 2.95 million, so just about three million. So hopefully with this year and this generation, we'll get over the three million mark. That's amazing. Well, um, great to, to see you here in Miami and great to drive this car. I really like it. I mean, there's a lot of new things that, I mean, like, for example, it's, uh, we didn't talk about the internal design. There's a lot of neat... Uh, features with all the design in here. Yeah, we've got some, you know, genuine stitching, for example, on the dash, the console, and the doors. You know, these finishers have like a diamond pattern to them. At night, there's ambient lighting under all these finishers. You know, you've got this pocket right here, which is perfect to store your cell phone. You know, if you've got even something as big as an iPhone 6 Plus. Yeah, I don't have the 6, I have the 5, yeah. but this one, not only you can like drop it in drop completely it in there, there yeah. but it has like a little ledge. Yeah, you can just pop it up there and then see notifications that come in if you want. Not to mention you have two USB ports now, so not just one, but both driver and passenger can charge their phones or play music off their phones as well. Uh, so a lot of you know unique details in the car really you make the interior stand out. You are about a quarter out. of a mile from your destination on the right. Well, we arrive at the destination here, the beautiful side Regis in Ball Harbor. Yeah. Uh, 